Within the past week, I released my MSL article, MSL, the river that runs both ways, and I did my Thorns platform video on that article. And in both pieces of media, I talk about North's T side is generally being a strength and their CT side generally being a weakness. But in both of those uh, pieces of media, I don't really go into specifics about why I think North CT side is weaker than their T side. So in this video, I thought I'd just go ahead and address that in more detail because, you know, in the article, I did mention um, how I thought MSL's ability to assign CT positions has come into question, but I don't really go beyond that because obviously um, there's more to Norris uh, CT size than MSL and his decisions as an in-game leader. So I guess the first place to start with this topic is you know whether or not it's actually true. Are Norris CT sides weaker than their T sides? Are their T sides a strength? Their CT sides a weaknesses, uh, weakness. And actually, if you look at like HLTV statistics or whatever statistic um, database you want to use, I think you'll actually get pretty even numbers in terms of raw data like T round wins versus CT round wins over the course of 2017 LAN games or in the last three months um, on, in LAN games, I think you'll get pretty even numbers, actually. But, yeah, I mean, I, looking at broad numbers, I think, is not always the best way of looking at it because, obviously, you might play a very weak opponent and be on the, on the T side and just rack up a bunch of T wins or the reverse. Um, you might rack up a bunch of CT wins. Um, you know, some games are much more important than the others. And I think generally, and in the article I specifically listed Norse game versus phase in the, must have been semifinals of E-League Premier, where they had pretty good T-sides, or they did until there was technical issues and North couldn't pause, but they um, didn't have good CT-sides. I think in the big games, in the most uh, marquee matchups, you see North coming up short um, in these CT sides. So that's generally why I list North CT side as a weakness. But if you even think about it, there's, there's I think, several issues that come up uh, that either makes North CT side a weakness or makes it seem weaker than it could possibly be. So the first one, and I guess the most obvious one, is uh, skill. So even going back to, say, the late 2016 Dignitas roster with Magic's Boy, he was called Magic's Boy back then, uh, Config, Cajun B, Rubino, and MSL, I think this roster was sort of given undue credit in terms of skill because you had two players who I think people want to make the leap up with them and say, okay, these are like superstar players now, or these are um, going to be superstar players, and these are obviously Magic's Boy and Config. And the thing with Magic's Boy is I think he's more of a player like, I think he, he reminds me of someone almost like Rain right now, not in terms of play style, but in terms of performance, the performance pattern, where he has a pretty good level of performance generally and then in certain maps and certain games he'll have that crazy output where he gets you know most famously Magic's Boy had like 30 kills in the E-League major must have been quarterfinals versus Verse Pro on Cobblestone like he had a crazy half where he got 30 kills in one half and I think this leads to people overrating both players, actually, where they overrated Magic Boy in the past, and they overrated, uh, they overrate um, Rain currently. But yeah, they do have these really good um, intervals or periods of, uh, of performance Th that, I mean, along with their regular, more regular good performances, makes them like a near superstar level player. And But... Yeah, I think sometimes he gets a little, or Magic's Boy back then did get a little 
overrated and people thought of him as being like a superstar level player. And um, I think back with the Rabino lineup, Config didn't have the same level of output that he does currently. I think, again, he was like a lead player, near superstar player, even maybe that's a bit stretching for him at that time. Um, but yeah, I don't think he was really at the level of the best players in the world quite yet. Um, then going down the lineup, you have Keisha B, good, stable level of performance. Um, then you have Rubino, who's actually sort of an interesting character. I think, you know, he's changed his play style quite a bit since he left North. And I, he even said that he left North of his own volition, even though everyone assumed he got kicked, because he could be a very variable performer on North. Um, some games he'd be really have a lot of output. Uh, he was the team's offer uh, a good bit. And he'd, yeah, um, have those crazy games where he would um, be pretty successful, but he'd also have really, really poor games. Um, so maybe on average, he'd be, you know, like an average player, but he'd be very variable. And sometimes when they had lose, he'd be like, wow, what's Rubino doing, right? Um, and then MSL is generally, you know, sort of just a poor performer. Um, some people would say even a very poor performer. I think that's fairly true. You look at his his skill set. Um, sometimes I think his skill set's almost... Some people uh, go too far on how bad he is. Because sometimes he just has some of these moments where it seems like he's just too much in his own head and he just looks completely terrible. And I even sort of mentioned this in the article that I, it might be some weird mental thing with him. It's always some weird mental thing with him because, you know, when he changed his sensitivity, sensitivity famously at DreamHack Masters uh, Las Vegas, he had like some really good performances. He looked a lot more skilled. So it's a weird thing with him, but yeah, I think generally he's a pretty poor performer for North or Dignitas back then. But moving into the new lineup, or the, I guess it's uh, the middle lineup, the one previous to the current one, with AZ replacing Rubino, I think you have a more consistent performer with AZ, but he's not the player that he was when he left Dignitas or recent, uh, originally. You know, he's not a, a strong performer. He's more, he's, I think he's pretty average. I think him and Cajun B are just sort of very average pros. Don't stand out to me terribly much. Um, but then you see this, but okay, that sort of stays the same from Urbino to AZ. Maybe even slightly underwhelming for AZ and slightly underwhelming for Urbino. But then you see this sort of flip with Config and Magics. Um, now he's Magix. Uh, he's dropped the boy. But I think you see less and less Magix um, in 2017 before he was dropped by North having these really outrageous superstar level performances. He's more just good, um, okay. And it's actually Config who goes from just being good or pretty good to ha you know having these moments, having these games where he looks extremely strong and being moving up and being more of like a near superstar level player. And some people might even want to call him a superstar. Um, yeah, so I think, but yeah, again, that's sort of a similar level of skill. And you got to remember, okay, Dignitas was a pretty good team at one point in the, what I call the uncertainty era in that August to say January 2016 to 2017 period. But um, you have teams like G2, the old phase with, um, Alu and Kiyoshima coming up. You have Astralis really hitting their peak as a, as a team. I mean, their skill level really doesn't change, but you know they obviously a much better performer, so that gives competition to North. Um, you also see teams like Gambit. I mean, it takes a while for Gambit to sort of figure out their shit, and they only really had the one super crazy performance at the major. I think some people retroactively will want to give Gambit too much credit during that. Um, majority of 2017 period just because they won the summer major but yeah um other teams like gambit coming up um navi's around with a lot of skill but you know not doing a lot with it of course so yeah i think 
increase even though their skill level relative to uh, their skill level relative to themselves stays pretty similar. You see their skill level in terms of the scene actually going down. And I think with Valdi joining the team or Valde or however you're supposed to say that, it's another sort of lateral trade. You replace one guy who's good, uh, not amazing anymore um, in Magics with Valdi, who's looked really good um, on Heroic at times, but I think hasn't had that same level on North, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But the next point I would say would be for this current uh, North lineup, why they're not super crazy on the CT sides, it's not just because they don't have a super crazy amount of skill in comparison to the top teams. Um, I also think that their leading uh, point of skill, as I discussed, is now Config. You know, he's a near superstar player. He's a very strong player. Um, but a lot of people have noticed this, that he's not as effective on the CT side as he is on the T side. Now, you can talk about why he is uh, very effective on the T side, as I did in um, the article in the video, where I think it's this combination of MSL doing that dual entry, tandem entry system where he goes in first in the very difficult entry way. He gets killed or he gets damaged down and then uh, Config comes in behind him and gets the kill. And then that opens up space for the T's. Even if MSL gets traded, I mean, that reduces the amount of people on the, the map by 20% if, if Config gets the trade as well. Um, and that opens up some room for the T's, and then, then uh, Config has more open room in the middle of an execute or just on the map to be a playmaker, be aggressive, be very aggressive as he uh, normally is. I think you see him really um, sort of utilizing space really well on uh, executes on the outer side on train. You'll see when he gets into ladder room or he gets outside of T-Con or um, something like this, he'll very quickly charge down the center of this site and really surprise um, the CTs often with his um, aggressive movement across the site and his aggressive positioning, his like fearless sort of entry style when he gets that little bit of space, you know, when the execute happens and he's free to, you know, do his super aggressive shit. But um, on the CT side... Well, okay, obviously just how Counter-Strike works on certain maps like Cobblestone, which is a big pick for for North, there's very limited opportunities for CT aggression. And just generally, again, as part of the game, CTs aren't the aggressors. They're sort of receiving the attack and trying to defend against this. And I think what makes Config effective is his sort of ballsiness sometimes, his um, movement, his positioning in the middle, or movement, uh, I guess, his the way he attacks, the way he uh, moves across the site, not necessarily his movement per se, but the, his uh, rotation or his transitive property, something like this, the way he um, moves across the site is very effective for him that leads to, to him utilizing a skill he's very brave very bold in that sense i think you know on the ct side you can just generally be in more stationary positions as the t's move into you i think that sort of um, limits his skill a good bit but i also think that if you look at north ct sides i, I think when I first was looking at it, I thought I, I thought I had an idea that it could be that North just don't take enough risks on the CT side. But if you look at their games, I actually think they do um, aggressive uh, team base peaks and pushes. Like if you look at the Blast game versus Astralis on Overpass, MSL tries, I assume it's MSL, trying some hard read where he stacks five men on the B site of overpasses CTs versus Astralis because he thinks that's where they're going to go. So this is a pretty big risk, pretty good read. You know, it's an aggressive, risky thing to do. North do do these things, but 
The thing that stands out to me when I watch North do these aggressive, you know, say peaks in the mid round or uh, pushes or stacks is I don't think con fig is often a focal point of these. Um, stacks are these pushes, these peaks. I think sometimes it's AZ, sometimes it's Valdi. I think uh, obviously uh, Cajun B with the op. I think that comes into um, the equation a lot, uh, that it's not config being set up as the um, this team's star or someone who they want to focus the, focus the action around on the CT side. And I even think I, I, I was wondering about this. I guess I'd have to do an interview with an MSL um, but, or Config. But I think when I watch Config on the CT side, even on maps, say, like Mirage, where North obviously plays that map a lot as well, you don't see Config doing these crazy pushes or um, being very aggressive on the CT side like some other players like uh, Fur. uh will be willing to do. I think really when I watch him play um, on CT sides, Config only gets very aggressive actually on eco rounds when there's not a lot to lose. And I don't know if that's MSL telling him, hey, don't take a risk here, don't die here. Um, we can't afford that. Or if that's Config being uncomfortable, you know, I'd have to interview these guys. But yeah, I don't see him doing these as much risky shit uh, on the CT side that you might expect for someone um, with the reputation of config. And um, I guess going into the third point, um, talking about CT positions and the assignment of CT positions, as I alluded to in the article, uh, I don't think config is often set up to be a star always on the CT side. For example, I think he plays... Ivy, Ivy on Train, Long A on Cobblestone. He does play like the primary B guy on Inferno, which is I think is a pretty good spot. He plays B along with MSL. But I actually think probably Pit, Pit Graveyard, uh, Pit Balcony, um, that sort of guy on Inferno is probably the most important person. So I sometimes I think that, yeah, Config is underutilized. Like Ivy is like more positional, more about using utility, more about holding the guys off rather than taking straight up confrontations. I think uh, ladder room is like probably the best place for a really skilled player. Like you saw Phelps and Fur alternate with that position on SK. You see Dupree at that position for Astralis. I think maybe that would be a better position for, or could be a better position. You don't know what these players' individual preferences are, but actually AC is taking that spot for uh, that ladder room spot for North currently. And in Sam's uh, article on North's uh, CT positions and how MSL set up Magics for Failure, which I referenced in my article on MSL, uh, he mentions AZ getting too much of the good spots, the high traffic spots. Well, MSL isn't, uh, not MSL, but Magics wasn't quite getting those spots. Yeah, and I think actually even Valdi sometimes um, is uh, not always given the best spots. Actually, he plays some very, very supportive spots. Now, he does get some very good spots. Like, he actually is the pit guy on Inferno on the CT side. But on, say, Train, he's the the guy I would say is like the five man. He plays the inner bomb side. He's like the anchor of the inner bomb side on Train. And he, let's see, on Mirage, he actually used to be sort of the small site anchor on the B site, which I, 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 I think of as the small site. I think most people do. Um, he used to be the anchor. And actually, if you read the other, I think Sam's actually usually pretty good about, Sam W is pretty good about um, North and, and keeping up to date with that team. In his interview with MSL, MSL says, on one prompted by Sam, of course, that they have actually switched their CT positions up since Epicenter. If you if you watch the Blast games um, or the EPL games, you can see that actually it's, uh, it's MSL who's gone towards the B side of Mirage now, and it's actually uh, Valdi on sort of, I think, a more impactful role on the uh, A side, on the big side. So, 
Yeah, uh, so I think Valdi sometimes will not have super good uh, CT spots, um, but sometimes he does. He has pretty good ones on um, Inferno, like I said, and uh, Cobblestone. He has like he's like the probably the most close up guy on the B site, which is the big site. Um, he plays more closer to like the the B ramp with the broken wall sort of positions. He's sort of the primary contact guy. So sometimes he does get pretty good spots, but sometimes he's uh, in these very supportive, I think, positions. That could just be his sort of weird role as a player where he's sort of like a Zitnik sort of guy almost, where he's seen as sort of a very effective player, but he's also a more supportive sort of element on the team, and he plays these more supportive CT positions. So I think that's a weird conflict with how MSL sets up his CT side positions. Or even in that interview with Sam, he says sometimes he lets the players pick. So I can't always assign that to MSL, but maybe as a leader, he should be like, I'm not giving AC these good spots anymore. Let's give these to um, to Colin Fick. He's our best performing player at the moment. And then for MSL himself, yeah, obviously he had a very bad event at the EPL or ESL Pro League Finals. I think it's Season 6 right now, the uh, Season 6 Pro League Finals. Uh, but he actually had some pretty good numbers, actually, at the start of uh, this lineup, the Valdi lineup. And it's sort of weird that stat guys don't notice this, where he has, like, actually really high HLTV 2.0 ratings um, at the first couple of events with this lineup. But, yeah, he obviously had a really bad event. He's a pretty poor performer. And sometimes I even think that MSL gives himself too good of uh, CT spots. Like, in the Thorns Reflection interview with MSL, he even says that it's Kirby playing drop on Cobblestone, which is weird to me, because then at that time period that they were talking about, Kirby was, like, their best player. But that could just be a relic from him not always being their best player, like people like AZ and Pimp leaving the team. But, yeah, sometimes I think that MSL um, doesn't always give himself, like, the super supportive spot, the super, you know, bitch spot, the super bad spot. Um, but now I think since the epicenter sort of CT side uh, repositioning, I think, like I talked about with Mirage, he is in generally very supportive spots. Drop on Cobblestone. Um, he's the B-side anchor now on Mirage. So I think that's uh, a point of concern. And just generally, of course, yeah, MSL not being a super good fragger leads to um, a weakening of their CT size. But generally, I think it's across these three points um, weakness of firepower relative to the very, very best teams in the world, so which prevents North from being like an elite team. Um, config, at the moment, this isn't a, a, a continuous problem, but a more recent problem, not being set up and as um, the star of their CT sides and not being as aggressive as he is on the TC sides, on the CT sides, and three, um, the positioning of config and valley as the supposed stars of the team on the ct side sometimes i don't think they get as good of positions and i think sometimes even msl uh gives himself too good of positions gives az too uh good of positions but i think that's changed a bit since the epicenter reformation but yeah i think it's across those three points